Hello, in this video I'm going to explain where the cardinal fixed immutable signs come from. Why do they exist? Why are Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn cardinal signs? What made them cardinal? And I don't mean in a philosophical abstract sense, but in a tangible sense, the you might say a physical or energetic basis for them. So I'm going to explain where they come from. This is part of a set of videos on zodiac signs. Why zodiac signs exist? Why there are uh, the elements, fire, there, water, all kinds of details about zodiac signs. There's actually an energetic reason, of, a basis even in physics, if you could believe that or not, <laughs> you know, because astrology is looked at as a, as a pseudoscience or purely symbolic archetypal language, and it's actually founded in the way reality is structured. Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about where cardinal fixed and mutable comes from. And the basic idea, and I've talked about this in other videos, is that they come Drum roll, believe it or not, sounds amazing, from Fibonacci numbers. You probably are familiar with Fibonacci numbers. I've got them listed at the top here. 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13. You take two numbers and add them together and get the next number. For example, if I jump into the middle of this, 13 plus 21 equals 34. 21 plus 34 equals 55. So they're Fibonacci numbers. And specifically, their Fibonacci numbers put into a rhythm. We call this a modulus function in mathematics. For example, we can put them into a rhythm of 10, or a modulus function of 10 is what we call it. And that just means you subtract out 10. So when we get to 13, we subtract out 10 and we get 3. So you see the Paisano period 10 means we're using a modulus 10 numbers here. The first numbers are the same as a Fibonacci, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8. When we get to 13, it becomes 3, 21 becomes 1, and so on. So the numbers are 0 to 9. And what happens with Paisano period 10 is that there are 60 of them. After 60, the, the cycle repeats again. Okay, and these Paisano periods, when you, when you take these 60 numbers of Paisano period 10, and this also works for other Paisano periods, but we're going to talk about Paisano period 10 in this video. When you put them around the circle, they create patterns of numbers. And within those patterns, amazingly, <laughs> it's mind-boggling, you find 12 groups of 30 degrees, which are the 12 zodiac signs. You also find the nakshatras used in Vedic astrology. You find the four elements, and here we're going to see how the... Paisano period 10 creates cardinal fixed and mutable. Okay, so a very important Paisano period is period 10. In other videos, I explain how Paisano period 10 creates the zodiac and how it creates fire, earth, air, and water signs. There are also other Paisano periods that create the zodiac. And in this video, I'm going to show you how Paisano period 10 creates cardinal fixed and mutable. And Paisano period 10, by the way, is particularly important. I explained some of the reasons why it's particularly important in a video called Fibonacci Numbers Golden Ratio Fifth Harmonic and the Zodiac Surprising Similarities. Long title for a very cool video that explains some of the reasons why Paisano period 10 is particularly important, but there are other Paisano periods that are also important. Okay, well, that's a general background. What we want to do in this video is get into the heart of why there are cardinal fixed immutable. And even if you didn't quite follow what I just said, because you haven't watched the other videos and all this might be new to you, no worries. We, you'll still be able to follow this. What I'm saying is on the right is a circle with 60 numbers of what's called Paisano period 10, Again, if that kind of went over your head, you're not familiar with all this, no worries. All I'm saying is that there's a, a mathematical, uh, what we, could we call a paradigm or system, 
that creates, you know, a mathematical pattern that creates 60 numbers, and we put them around a circle, and that means five numbers for each sign. So I've got Aries on the top here. Aries is 0, 1, 1, 2, 3. And I put it on the left here. 0, 1, 1, 2, 3 is Aries. And then Taurus is 5, 8, 3, 1, 4. 5, 8, 3, 1, 4. So this might sound weird, even to astrologers. Like, whoa, where does he come up with this stuff? That each zodiac sign has a five-digit code. Whoa. <laughs> I know it sounds a little wild to both astrologers and non-astrologers that there's a numeric code for zodiac signs. Like, where the heck does he get this crazy stuff from? Yes, believe it or not, there's a code. And on the left, I'm showing you the code. There's actually more than one code. This is one of them. So that Virgo has a code of 53819. I know, I know, I know. Sounds maybe unbelievable or too bizarre. Or, but what I'm saying is that this is really grounded, as you will see, in some very clear observation, not some like weird woo-woo thing. This, let me show this to you, that this code actually makes sense. Okay, and like I said, it's not the only code, but it's one of the most important ones. Okay, you all with me? What I'm just saying is that there's this pattern of numbers, and that in that pattern of numbers, that pattern of numbers actually is the code of the zodiac signs, which creates the zodiac signs. Okay, this is all radically new ideas for most people. Now, notice, I've got the same exact thing here as on the previous screen. Let me go back to the, pre the previous slide. There's the previous slide. All I'm going to do is highlight the numbers in the first column of the five columns of the signs. You might already notice it goes 0, 5, 5, 0, 5, 5, 0, 5, 5, 0, 5, 5. Where is it coming from? Just look at the circle on the right. 0 starts Aries, 5 starts Taurus, 5 starts Gemini, 0 starts Cancer, etc. Amazingly, the Fibonacci numbers put into modulus 10, known as Paisano period 10, creates a pattern which matches the zodiac signs exactly. So here I've highlighted it to make it very clear. There's the zero highlighted in yellow and the fives highlighted in green, just to make it very conspicuous. So reading from the slide here, the code for cardinal zodiac signs begins with zero. Others begin with five, so you have a rhythm. Zero, five, five, zero, five, five. Cardinal fixed mutable, cardinal fixed mutable. Interesting coincidence that cardinal signs are looked at as being like the hinges of a gate, like the swinging point. That's an analogy to, some of you may know, to, uh, to, to what goes on with houses, but never mind. You have cardinal fixed mutable, and there it is, zero, five, five. Interesting coincidence that there's a rhythm in Paisano period 10, when put around the circle, that matches cardinal fixed mutable exactly. Well, is it a coincidence? <laughs> there, there's like a hundred of these coincidences. Um, and we even have a very clear reason for how the Fibonacci numbers create the zodiac. It's amazing, all the detail we understand about this. That's just the beginning. On the next slide, I'm going to show you more details about how this sequence of numbers what I'm saying is that that sequence of numbers on the left side of your, of your screen, that, for example, let's randomly take a sign, Virgo, 53819. I'm going to show how when you combine these codes together, you're going to see cardinal fixed mutable. First way we see it is with the first column, 055055055055. That sets the basic tone. But it's very intricate and beautiful. There's this cosmic tapestry. Okay, next thing we'll do, let's group the cardinal signs together. So I've taken Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn on the left side, and I've simply grouped them together, right? That's all I've done. So for example, Libra is 09987, and I put it up here, 09987. 
I'll show you another one. Scorpio is 52796. And I put it over here. So all I've done is just arrange them in cardinal fixed mutable. Okay. Cool. Doesn't seem to be anything particularly interesting. We are seeing the 055. Everything looks else looks kind of random. It looks random, but when you look at it closely, you start to see something amazing. First thing we see is this, or first thing I'll point out. Interestingly, every column adds up to 20, except for the first column, which come, adds up to zero, uh, zero for cardinal. Every other column adds up to 20. So, for example, let's take the first column. I'm going to call it first. Let's skip the, the, the first column. You know, the second column here, uh, first column of interesting numbers, 1793. 1 plus 7 is 8. 8 plus 9 is 17. 17 plus 3 is 20. Total is 20. Let's take this column here. 2 plus 4 is 6. 6 plus 8 is 14. 14 plus 6 is 20. If you add up every one of these columns, they total to 20. And this is one of the keys that we see over and over again, is you simply add the numbers and the patterns appear. So, to read from the slide here, the total for the five columns in all cases are 0 or 20. Um, 0 or 20 for the first column, 20 for the others. And 20, why 20? 20 is 10 times 2. If you do a modulus 10, which is what this, this Paisano period, it's all about modulus 10. You do it on 20, what do you get? 0. They all become zero, which is our starting point. It's like the singularity, the nothingness or the allness. It's what this whole vibration is based on. And we see this over and over again in the way that Paisano periods create the zodiac. What's happening is that this rhythm of numbers, this Paisano period of 10, is spread around a cosmic circle. That also sounds weird, but in other videos I explain in detail how that happens. We actually know how that happens. It's not just some figment of our imagination. It's founded in basic physics. Okay, let me get back to my point here. Is that when you spread these 16 numbers around the circle, they create connections. It's a weaving. And what happens is that the cardinal signs connect by adding the numbers to be the basic vibration we're talking about, they've reduced to zero. This is like threads in a tapestry. Imagine it's like a tapestry woven together, and it weaves together the cardinal signs at every column, five-digit code for each sign. When it connects to all the other cardinal, put all the cardinal together, all the fixed, all the mutable, they blend together to create that ba base note that everything is based on. And this is how Paisano periods create the zodiac. They create a rhythm of numbers, and those rhythm of numbers are woven together to create a clear, precise tapestry. The tapestry here is all those columns become zero, and it it brings them all together in a rhythm, and they're all equally spaced around the circle. So that rhythm, equally spaced around the circle, creating this unifying quality. Okay, hope you can feel this, that there's a, that there's a vibrational universe created out of fundamental growth processes like Fibonacci numbers, Prime numbers, there's rhythms of those that also create the zodiac, amazingly enough. And these rhythms of numbers are creating a quality, a vibration in the cosmos, in what we call space, uh, in, in, in physics and in, and in this form of astrology. Okay, so that's the unifying thing. This is the unifying thing that creates the cardinal fixed mutable. Now, why is fixed fixed? 
a sustaining kind of energy. Why is mutable more flexible? That is actually, believe it or not, as you will see, it's in the details of the numbers. So this Paisano period creates the structure, cardinal fixed mutable, and as we will see, it creates the qualities for why cardinal is cardinal, why fixed is fixed, why mutable is mutable, and I'll show that to you next. So what I've done here is I've put in green, this is the same exact thing we saw on the previous screen, if I go back to the, uh, you know, the previous slide, I've taken this middle column here of cardinal fixed mutable, I've just moved this to the left, and I've color-coded it. So I've color-coded the sequences that are in common. So we see a 1793 appear twice in the cardinal. We see it occur once for the fixed. We don't see it at all for the mutable. We see, for example, 3179, I put a, a blue background there. We see that appear once for the cardinal, once for the fixed, once for the mutable. Let me go back to the previous screen. Here it just looks like, like a jumble of numbers. It's, all I'm saying is when you look more closely, you see, oh, 1793, 1793. Oh, there's a 1793 down here for fixed. Um, there's a, let's see, a 7931 here. So we get some different uh, patterns going on. So let's see. Okay, let's go on to the next slide. Um, looking for something. Oh, it's this one. Notice this, 3179, 3179 in the fixed, 3179, a 3179 appears in all of them. There's something going on with similar sequences that when you look at the cardinal as a group, the fixed as a group, as a mutable as a group, there seems to be some something going on. And here... I've made it clear. There's the 3179 in blue. 3179 occurs once for cardinal, once for fixed, once for mutable. Uh, 1793 is common. It appears three times, twice for cardinal, once for fixed. And 4862 that I put in yellow with a bold red numbers appears twice, once for fixed, once for mutable. So I'm showing the identical sequences appearing, and we start to make some interesting observations. So what I'm saying is, we just put these Paisano numbers around the circle, and there are patterns and resonances that create frequencies, vibrations, and qualities in space. And that's what we call the zodiac. And, and it creates cardinal fixed mutable. Oh, well, now let's look at the details a little more closely. Notice that every column is either even numbers or odd numbers, right? 1793, odd. 3179, odd. 2486, even. Well, that's a curious consistency, a curious simplicity. And this is really surprising because you take Fibonacci numbers, which seem to be arbitrary numbers, you put them in this rhythm of 10, Paisano period 10, you put them around a circle, and then why, what the heck? It forms these simple elegant patterns. Every column is odd or it's even. Just making an observation. And the even numbers are always 2, 4, 6, 8, and the odd numbers are 1, 3, 7, 9. Notice that 2, 4, 6, 8 are the only even numbers between 0 and 9, other than 0, but 0 is left out to be in the first column. So we Zero is left out for even, and five is left out for the odd. Those are the singularity numbers. Those are the base note. That's like the key we're playing in. It's even more 
than a key. It's like the fundamental oneness that's underlying this rhythm. So the zero and the five are separated out into the first column with that rhythm 055, five, all of the other numbers are distributed in an extremely similar way so that we have either the even or the odd with the singularity numbers of 0 and 5 removed. It's an amazingly beautiful, consistent patterning that's going on and is surprising because just looking at Fibonacci numbers, we don't expect to find this, but through observation, this is what's happening. Okay, so there's this beautiful consistency. Surprising when you think about it, like, wow, that's interesting. And notice, by the way, if you look at what's going on here, this is a minor point, but kind of interesting. The odd numbers go 1, 3, 1, 3, 7, 9. The two lowest numbers are 1, 3. If you add 1 to both of those, you get 2, 4. In other words, 1 plus 1 is 2, 3 plus 1 is 4. You take the odd numbers and subtract 1. 7 minus 1 is 6, 9 minus 1 is 8. So what's happening here is there's a symmetry where the even numbers are balanced with the odd numbers in a perfect way so that every column adds up to 20. The patterns are so intricate, so beautiful, so subtle, so elegant, so finely nuanced that your head might begin to spin with all of the subtle refinements going on. It's a little bit like looking at a, a Middle Eastern tapestry or a mandala made in India where all these intricate, beautiful things are going on. That's what's happening here. I'm summarizing them quickly. You can watch this again and again, pause it and think about it, you know, to let it settle in like all of these intricate patterns. I'm just going through them quickly here. So also what you'll notice, there are only seven kinds of columns. There's a 1793, a 3179, a 7931, and a 9317. Those are the four odd combinations. And then there are three even, 2486, 4862, 8624, and also the first column, which is 0 or 5. But, you know, we already understand that first column. So focusing on the other four columns, we see seven possible combinations. There are a huge number of possible combinations, but this reduction to a simple patterning is setting the patterns within the cardinal fixed mutable, these themes. And furthermore, the odd numbers are all in the same sequence starting with a different number. 1, 7, 9, 3. If I start with 3 instead of 1 and come around, I would get 3, 1, 7, 9. 3, 1, 7, 9. If I start with 7, 7, 9, 3, 1, it's there. If I start with 9, I would get 9, 3, 1, 7. Same thing with this, 2, 4, 8, 6. If I start with 4, I get 4, 8, 6, 2. If I start with 8, I get 8, 6, 2, 4. In other words, there's only two sequences, a 1, 7, 9, 3, and a 2, 4, 8, 6, that begin at different starting points. What I'm mentioning here, what I'm presenting to you, is that there's a simple consistent set of numbers that appear out of Paisano period 10 when they're arranged around a circle and related directly to astrology. Wow. It just is. It's a fact that these patterns exist. Now, now let's make some specific observations that get into the interpretation. I know this is a lot of information. <laughs> you might want to pause, take a deep breath, you know, have a little tea and, and, and watch some more. I'm, I'm just bombarding you with information. Okay. Notice this. 3179 that I put in the dark blue background. It appears once in cardinal, once in fixed, once in mutable. So it's a very 
consistent, simple idea that 3179 appears one time in all three, these are sometimes called modes in astrology, once in cardinal, once in fixed, once in mutable. So for cardinal, it happens to be the last column. For um, fixed, it happens to be the third, the middle column of the five. And for the mutable, it happens to be the fourth column. It jumps to different columns, the fifth to the third to the fourth. So they all have 3179. So this creates a connection that cardinal, fixed, and mutable can relate to each other because they have one sequence in common. It's at a different column, but they all have a 3179. It's the only consistency that all, all of them have, cardinal, fixed, and mutable. That's the thread. This is like looking at a beautifully woven tapestry. And you're seeing one thread go through all three of them, the 3179, in the same exact order, starting with three, a perfect consistency. 3179, it's like a weaving, going through different columns. This creates a connectivity so that the cardinal fixed immutable are not completely disparate and unrelated. They're able to have some connection to each other. Now, fixed has a unique quality that cardinal and mutable don't have because fixed signs are the glue. They sustain. They take the cardinal and connect to it, and then they connect to the mutable. So the fixed signs are in the middle, being the glue that connects. And here's how it works. In addition to the 3179 that all of them have, fixed has an additional connection. Fixed and cardinal both have a 1793. In fact, cardinal has two of them, but for now I'm just going to focus on, on just one of them. There's a 1793 in cardinal and a 1793 in fixed. So cardinal and fixed have another vibration, a sequence. It's like a sequence of notes. It's almost like a melody line. Just imagine like a little melody line. They share that melody line and fixed and mutable both have 4862. 4862, 4862. Cardinal and mutable have nothing in common except the common thread of 3179. They have nothing else in common. The, the summary is this. Cardinal, fixed, and mutable all share one melody line. We can think of it. One column. This means it's like a thread that connects it into a tapestry. Otherwise, it'd be almost like three different items. It'd be like somebody um, knitting a scarf and it would be three separate scarves. But this one thread of the 3179 connects them all together and then fixed has an, an additional bonding. You can th think of these as threads or bonds. Fixed bonds to both cardinal and mutable and helps sustain the flow of cardinal fixed mutable. And here I put little boxes around it to help make it clear. So here's the blue, and I've drawn an arrow with these boxes, blue to blue to blue, 3179. And here I've shown the additional bonding of 1793 in cardinal to 1793 in fixed, and I show the 4862 bonding to the 4862. So I've drawn little arrows and boxes. That means that two of these additional four columns, if we skip the first column, which is simple and we understand it, the second, third, fourth, and fifth columns are the, are the more complicated, interesting ones, you might say. The first column sets the basic rhythm. So we've accounted for two of the columns, how they bond together, and then there are two independent columns, unbonded, to the two 
to the um, next signs in the cardinal fixed mutable sequence. Now here's an interesting thing. Although cardinal and mutable have only one exact match, the only exact match of columns in cardinal mutable is 3179. They do not have the additional match that fixed has, so they don't have this strong connectivity. Fixed signs are the sustainers, the connectors that make the energy flow from cardinal fixed to mutable. But they have something in common that's different from fixed, which is this. Cardinal and mutable both have three odd columns and one fixed. So the only fixed column Again, I'm, I'm focusing on the, on the four, the four that give variety, richness, and complexity to this tapestry. Among these four that I put, <clears throat> excuse me, in a highlighted color, notice Cardinal has only one fixed, the yellow background, 2486. And Mutable has only one fixed, 4862. Fixed signs have two fixed. 8624 and 4862. Fixed signs are the only signs that have two sets of even and two odd. Cardinal and mutable have three odd and one even. This means that the fixed signs are more even numbered. And that also has to do with energy, motion, and connectivity because two in vibrational astrology means polarity connecting. 6 equals 3 times 2, connecting in a harmonious way. These are action connecting. 1, 7, 9, 3. Those are prime numbers, and 9 is 3 squared, a square prime. These give individual unique qualities. So cardinal and mutable have more complexity of qualities because they have more prime numbers, and the 9, which is a prime squared, which are special numbers, the cardinal and mutable have, have more essential ingredients. The fixed signs are more concentrated on even numbers, which are action, and two of those actions are, are six and two, which have the two in them, and they're connecting. If you're familiar with vibrational astrology theory, you're able to follow everything I'm saying. If you're not, this is a lot to absorb. But the bottom line is this, cardinal and mutable have more complexity, more tools in the toolbox than fixed signs. But fixed signs have more sustaining and relating power for two reasons, two columns of fixed and two columns in common with cardinal and mutable. So we see the strong emphasis that fixed signs are sustaining action and bonding and connecting and movement. Cardinal and mutable have the advantage of a more flexible toolbox. Now that makes sense for mutable, but we're going to see that mutable in the next slide I show you. Mutable is more flexible than cardinal, exactly as we would expect. Let me show that to you. Um, that Okay, just to summarize what I have here, fixed has two odd and two even, more sustaining action energy. Mutable has, here's why mutable is so mutable. Amazingly, these number patterns describe cardinal fixed mutable. The reason why mutable is more flexible and adaptable than cardinal and fixed is because mutable has two unique odd sequences. I've put a, a, a box around the sequence of numbers that are not connecting numbers. Okay, on the right side, let me show you what I mean by connecting numbers. On the right side, underneath this wheel, let's read what I wrote here. 1793, that's the green. The green, 1793, the bright fixed, 4862, that's the bright yellow with the bold red. So the green, the yellow with the bright red, and the 3179, the blue, those are all connecting sequences. 
they are like little melody lines. Imagine a little song, silent night, holy night. It's like a little melody. I don't know why I picked that one of all the melodies in the universe. They're all like little melodies. And these three sequences, 1793, 4862, and 3179, they're shared melodies. Shared melodies. So which ones are not shared melodies? that are unique to Cardinal. Cardinal has one unique sequence, 1486, uh, sorry, <laughs> 2486. Cardinal has one unique sequence, 2486. Fixed has one unique sequence, 8624. All of the others are shared. So this unique melody line, this unique sequence, is gives the unique quality help it's one of the things that gives a unique quality and the mutable as we would expect with mutable it doesn't have just one like cardinal fix it has two unique melodies so the mutable like cardinal has three odd sequences whereas fixed has only two gives it more variety more tools in the toolbox and two of them are totally unique so mutable is <laughs> It's pulling on things that Cardinal Fix can't pull on. It's got a lot, lot of little tricks in its bag. It's mutable. It's flexible. It picks up on all these different essences. It has less consistency. It's more variable. It has, it has less connectivity. And the Cardinal is also the one that starts with zero, zero, five, five. It's that big beat. And it's less flexible and has less essential ingredients. Prime numbers, also square primes, they're the fundamental essences. Having a lot of fundamental essences, essences gives you a lot of tools in your toolbox, a lot of choices, but it also means less consistency, more variability, more things you're going to do. The sequence of numbers describes the qualities of cardinal, fixed, and mutable. Now, am I projecting too much on here? Am I making things up? No, because if you look at it, that's what the numbers are. And not only that, this is only one observation of a huge number of observations that I put in dozens of videos on where the zodiac signs come from and the structure within the zodiac signs. Somehow, I don't know how, the ancient people created this concept of zodiac signs and things like cardinal fixed immutable and fire of their water and now we're finding that there's a mathematical basis a mathematical model that integrates with modern physics in ways i'm not describing in this video where we we understand that the zodiac is created out of spin these numbers are embedded in SPID, and we know how they're anchored to, to the Zodiac. I'll talk about that a little bit more in the next slide. But my point is, this is why there's cardinal fixed and mutable. And one thing you'll notice is that it's not so simplistic, like mutable signs are going to be just totally mutable. They're a little more flexible. They're a little more toolbox. But they have connections and similarities to the others. They all have the 3179. It has another sequence in common, common with fixed. So there's, you know, some similarities and some differences that distinguish cardinal fixed and mutable. So, summary of key points. Uh, this is a long video. We're going to be probably 45 minutes or so, but that's okay. Key points. Number one, Paisano periods create the zodiac. That's where the zodiac comes from. Creates the four elements, fire, earth, air, and water. Creates the three modes, cardinal, fixed, immutable, which is our topic for this video. It creates the gender, the fact that we call air, uh, fire and air signs masculine and earth and water feminine. There's actually a specific quality that we're calling, quote, masculine and, quote, feminine to them. All of this is in the Paisano periods and the prime number sequences that create the zodiac. Number two, cardinal fixed and mutable are vibrational relationships between signs, and fixed signs have more sustaining power, more ability to relate, and fewer unique qualities. 
As I just described, mutable signs are the most versatile and able to tap unique qualities. Uh, that's the unique odd number sequences. Cardinal signs have a fresh perspective. They have the initiative of that zero in the first column. Just summarizing some key points. Point number three, all columns add up to zero or 20. And 20 in modulus 10 is also zero. This means that all columns are whole and complete. The resolution to the sing we call the singularity of zero establishes the vibrational pattern of cardinal fixed mutable as fundamental. Number four, astrology is based on sacred geometry, resonance, and vibration. The qualities are built from the essential structure and vibration. The archetypal and mythic stories are born out of these essences in the structure and vibrations. So in this system of astrology, this is all part of vibrational astrology, we're seeing that all these archetypes and mythic stories are born out of the vibrations. The vibrations are what's fundamental and essential. If you use these ideas, it improves your chart interpretation, by the way. Point number five, chart interpretation. Oh, that's my point number five. Chart interpretation is greatly improved by using these principles and the evidence-based methods that we use in vibrational astrology. We have the theory that explains how things work, and we have controlled research studies with databases and other kinds of research that confirm the ideas. So these patterns in Paisano period 10, what are they? They are the sutras, as it's called in, in, in Vedic um, philosophy, the threads, the cosmic threads that are woven into our lives. And we understand how the zodiac is created in space. I have several videos that explain what I mean by this. They're created in space from patterns of Paisano periods and prime numbers, and they're embedded in spin. This is also discussed in other videos. And, and we understand how those numbers embedded in spin get anchored to create the tropical zodiac, they create the sidereal zodiac, they create the draconic zodiac, and they create house systems. Whoa. <laughs> we have a simple theoretical framework, consistent, beautiful, elegant, explains where all of these things come from. It's unheard of in astrology. Astrology is just normally a bunch of ideas handed down for mysterious reasons all these things exist. We actually understand where they all come from and how dimension reduction is involved in the process. It's understood in great detail. I've got dozens of videos. This video is one part of the sequence focusing on the cardinal fixed mutable. These theories and this theoretical framework, it's consistent with modern science. That's unusual for astrology. It's consistent with mystical philosophy. It answers many, many, many questions like, where does all this stuff come from? It removes a tremendous amount of cognitive dissonance, like things that seem contradictory or strange. It explains many details of astrology, and it is innovative, and thus far astrologers are slow to respond to these discoveries. You don't see uh, you know, social media, Twitter, and Facebook all lit up about, whoa, these vibrational astrologers have discovered <laughs> this breakthrough about how astrology works. They're slow to respond. They're, you know, very slow. We've, we've had this information out for years. So, you know, just to joke around, maybe astrology, people say it's ruled by Uranus. Maybe it's ruled by Saturn. Well, sorry if that's politically incorrect or just joking around. But, you know, if you're watching this, some people have posted and asked, you know, you know in different ways, contacted us and said, why is nobody talking about this? <laughs> this is mind-boggling. You know, I don't know. It, it just takes time. It's an innovation. It's a paradigm shift that not only do we understand where it all comes from, we have actual data that validates it as well. You would think people might get excited about this. Well, they are gradually, but it's the excitement is happening outside of astrology, at least as much as inside astrology. Okay, so I just want to mention that because you may think, wow, how come I've never heard about this? What's going on? Well, you'll hear about it, just taking time for people to realize how exciting and really revelatory this is. And some resources, I'll mention this quickly. There's an annual Vibrational Astrology Conference, first week of March in Gainesville, Florida. It's not online. It is a live, actual, in-person conference. You can go to astrosoftware.com and click on... Um, maybe I should bring that up quickly. Uh, should I bring it up? Well... Let me, uh, 
let me go over here, over here. Okay, here is, let me shrink this. Sorry, I didn't have this prepared. I want to just show this to you quickly. Uh, drag this. Yeah, come on, drag, drag, my friend. Let's see, there you go. There's our browser. Okay, so you can see that. Um, I'm at astrosoftware.com, and if you click on conferences, you'll see the information. If you want to learn more about the Vibrational Astrology Conference, uh, there's information. So whatever you, your year you're watching this, you'll see the information for the next one. Okay, back to my YouTube, my uh, PowerPoint. Astrologydc.com. That's my personal website where I've organized the videos into... Um, I've organized them into sequences, similar to what in YouTube is called playlists. And there's a, a fee, usually like 30 or $40, or something like that a year. If you want to have it all organized together and do like a self-learning system. But all the videos now, I've moved them back to be public. I think there's 586 YouTube videos that I've made or some number like that as of what is today, June 30th, 2022. And I'm adding about one more every week. Huge number of videos all available for free. And there's also in organized into sequences. Some playlists available um, on, on YouTube as well. But more will be added to Astrology DC. There's the books, the Vibrational Astrology, the Essentials, and the Astrology Bipolar Disorder Scientific Breakthrough. This is the, the huge change. This is the one that's making the paradigm shift. The Astrology of Bipolar Disorder Scientific Breakthrough. You can Google it and see all the places you can order from. And then there are classes. You could Google Vibrational Astrology and see different Vibrational Astrologers who are giving classes. That's it, my friends. Where am I? 46 minutes. The video is a little bit longer than usual. But I hope you've got the idea that this is where Cardinal Fixed and Mutable come from. Imagine that why they exist. And if you get into this deeper, why the zodiac exists? How, where does it come from? It doesn't come from the stars. We have an understanding of where the sidereal zodiac comes from. And even it is born out of a sacred geometry in space. All of this makes much more sense in terms of physics, in terms of the spiritual dimensions of astrology. It's the only explanation that covers all of these things in a beautiful, elegant and way, elegant way. So it's way beyond, almost futuristic in what's been developed. Okay, my friends. Whew, we're done. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening. God bless. Namaste.